What is good? We're back. We're ready to roll. We're trying something a little different out tonight. We got a little video option for your pleasure. So we got a, if you're listening on the podcast, hop on over to YouTube, check out the video. We're going to have a kind of a visual demonstration to go along with what we are saying tonight. So a little bit more to stimulate your senses. I got uh, my normal cast of characters here. Old Jay Wayne doing a little bit more tonight. What's up, Jay Wayne? Still getting it in, though. Still getting it in. <laughs> is that a Red Bull? <laughs> no, this is a Poke the Bear from our friends down at the Revelry Brewing Company. You got to go check out their new location, The Hold, like, what, a block away from the brewery at 10 Conroy Street? Oh, for sure. It's pretty awesome. Special sour barrel-aged beers. Got to check that out. But well, how are you doing tonight, Biko? Oh, I'm loving it. Got another mock draft lined up for you guys tonight. Like Casey said, bringing you the video version. Right. This if, is if you're if you're looking at YouTube right now, this is our website, theffdynasty.com. For your pleasure, go check it out. All of our stuff is here. If you're listening on the podcast, go to the website. Under the More tab, there'll be a Mock Draft Boards uh, link. And you click on that, and it'll have all of the, you know, you'll be able to see the, the three spot and the ten spot that we've already done. And inside of there, you'll be able to see the draft board. So if you're listening on your phone, you can pull up the draft board and kind of follow along as you'd like. Um, but if not, you know, definitely go over to YouTube and check out the video because we're going to actually take you through this mock draft that we already recorded and we're going to kind of talk through the strategy tonight. Oh, so, heck yeah. So there's kind of like two parts to this thing. What we're going to do with the video part of this thing, if you're listening as the podcast, is we're going to kind of just give you more of the uh, ideals and the strategy behind picking and not get caught up in too much of the player versus player conversation and all that kind of stuff like we did in the last 10 spot draft where we just kind of walked through every pick and argued our cases for things. We're going to save that for just a full on podcast. And here we're just going to kind of um, still put it out as a podcast, obviously, because you're listening to it right now, but it <laughs> also give you the video option to kind of see all the players and that and walk through as we're going through this draft. Right. So Last week, we picked from the 10 spot. This week, we're going to do it from the 3 spot. Yeah, and last week, we, we were in the back half of the draft saying how much we love the back half of the draft. And, you know, I don't really want to be in the front end of the draft because it's miserable. And, you know, you don't get these turn picks like you were getting here. And I like all these players. But personally, the way this thing ended up, I like this team better than the other team. And, you know, you're in a room and you never know how the room's going to fall. Sure. And you got to know your room, figure all that out. But... I really like this team, and I actually kind of enjoyed being in the front of the draft, so I retract possibly my statement sure. of, of hate. Well, most of that hate came from your second and third pick. You know, if you're if you're at the front of the draft, you're picking your late two and early three, and really once you get past the fourth round, all the picks kind of wash together yeah. based on opinion, so it really doesn't matter where you started once you get past three or four rounds. But in this draft, obviously, like case, you know, every if you know if you've ever been in a couple of different drafts, you understand right. that. You know, from draft to draft, you're like, wow, this guy would be went, a whole round yeah, swing. This guy went in the third round of this round. He went in the fifth round of this round. So this mock, the way it fell out, having a, a, a front end pick and our second and third pick was this awesome. really worked out well for us. So let's yeah. check it out. Well, Have if it. we get Todd Gurley, then I'm in for whatever spot I get right. Todd Gurley at pretty much. So on your screen here now, obviously, the first two picks are DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham located in the left part of your screen there. Uh, so we have our choice of any running back we want. Obviously, we're, we're going back here. If you listen to the last one, we're, we're in on the backs. We'll get into a little bit more reasoning behind that. Um, so it's dealer's choice here. And it was pretty consensus between the three of us that we were going old Todd Gurley. Right. I mean, you got to go. You don't have to go Gurley here. You can you know, sure. take whoever you want. No, you but, do. I mean, right. For, for us, for <laughs> you us, gotta you got to go Gurley. Here. For us, you go Gurley. Uh, you know, Casey and I are pretty heavily, you know, invested in. Zeke and Le'Veon Bell and other areas and stuff like that. So it's really easy to go girly here for us. It's just basically diversification. Yeah, well, plus, and you get you get the youth and a system that I love. Yep. And and the youth, the system, and the, the player. You kind of got uh, the skill yeah. of the player. Yep. You kind of have the the great trifecta of, of things that you want in your dynasty player here. I like it. Absolutely. I mean, he should be number one off the board in every draft. Yeah, so easy pick for us here. We're back on the clock. Some some guys fell off. What's the uh, amount that falls off here? This is again 18, 18 picks. Same thing. So we, yeah, we're three in. Last time we were three from the other end. So eighteen picks so go off. Eighteen picks fall off. Obviously, you could check everybody out here on the left side of the screen. Not going to read them all, but we're left with a choice of basically we narrow it down to kind of 
Christian McCaffrey, Mixon, Cooks, Diggs, and A-Rob. And really, when that comes down to it, for me personally, it really came down to Diggs and Melvin Gordon. Right. You, you, did, you left you Melvin Gordon Melvin. on that first well, list. Well, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's up at the top of the list here. So, right. to me, it's between Diggs and Cooks, or Diggs and uh, Melvin, Gordon. Melvin Gordon, sorry. And really, it's not that much of a tough decision for me. I like Diggs a whole lot, but I want to get my two backs here for sure. I like Melvin. I like his profile. We got tons of Melvin talk um, over Christian McCaffrey and why we like him and all those kind of deals. Um, so this is an easy pick for me, and I don't know what the con- – was this a consensus pick for you guys? It, I think was. it was. Yeah, yeah it sure. was. I, I, I love Stefan Diggs as well. Like you said, I, it for me, it came down when we were doing this draft. It came down between Diggs and Gordon. And, and a, like you said, a philosophy pick really because of the drop off as, it, you know, a couple rounds from now, you won't be able to find anybody near getting the volume and the points per game that Melvin Gordon from the running back perspective that you can get similar to Diggs, not necessarily the, you know, the 24 year old potential next, you know, Antonio Brown, hopefully kind of guy, but maybe. And he's the most underappreciated workhorse in the game year in melvin year gordon. out melvin yeah. gordon and yeah. so the new the new adp is out for dlf for july and melvin gordon is up to 18 christian mccaffrey down to 20 hey, oh. they've been listening just this last month we had to put out a podcast in the adp talk and tell you guys that you should be taking melvin gordon over christian mccaffrey in your dynasty startups and there it is it well, jumped back up just to straighten this out one guy in our youtube comments wanted to uh colt 45 he yeah. wanted to point out that you, you can't, can't make, make him me. take Christian McCaffrey <laughs> over Melvin Gordon. No, right. no, I cannot. Nope, we cannot. <laughs> and the reasoning it's was a it's country. a contract year and Eckler's coming. And I would disagree with that very heavily that Eckler is not coming. <laughs> and it is a contract year. So either way, whether they're bringing him back or not bringing him back, they're going to ride the dog shit out of this guy this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're going to put it in his gut just like they've been doing. Right. Absolutely. And this yeah. guy was the 19th highest scorer in the whole league. For as far as fantasy is concerned, average right. over 18 points a game. 19th overall in scoring, including quarterbacks. Including quarterbacks. Yeah, that's that's solid. Including the QB. I don't care how good this you is think Eckler is. He's not league. taking this workhorse who's been the workhorse for the San Diego Chargers. And as we've stated, as I've stated before, you've never even seen the best Melvin Gordon. This offensive line has been miserable Shambles. for the entire time he's been there. And it's the best it's ever been coming into this season. So if they can stay healthy, I think Melvin Gordon's going to be in for a great year. Right. Just like he's always in for. Right. Like regardless of what's going on, he consistently crushes right. it. So. so what you're looking at, the, you're, you're looking at this pick and you're just basically licking your chops for the next pick. Right. You know, because there's four players about to fall off the off the turn here and then we're going to get another pick so that goes right into what casey was saying we beat up this front end pick but a couple all it takes is for a player or two to slide to your end of the second round pick and the you know the dlf adp shows melvin gordon going off of two or three picks before this pick but anything can happen and he slid down here and made us very happy for sure all right so we're driving along we're driving along <laughs> We got uh, the four, four guys that fall off are Sammy Watkins, Christian McCaffrey, Diggs, and T.Y. Hilton, which, you know, maybe if Diggs is around, we consider a little Diggs action here. But really, the piece that we really want right here is still hanging around, a little juicy vittle for us. <laughs> which are num-nums. My we num-nums. <laughs> so we, we really want Devontae Freeman right here. Gotta have him. In the worst way. We talked about it last week, how if Freeman's around and we can get him as our third player on our team, as our third running back on our team, typically... It just gives us a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. We feel like we can kind of do no wrong with the next couple of picks. We get to kind of do whatever we want, really, in my opinion. I can go whoever and whatever position I want. I feel great about my first three. My third guy is probably better than most of your ones, at least some weeks, and he's definitely better than your two, and he's going to be in my flex every single week. Exactly. That's that's You summed it up great, and we did last week. We talked about the potential that we were looking for in the Devontae Freeman pick there in the third round, and he didn't make it back to us. So the the beauty of the early pick for the first round is you got a high shot at getting Freeman in the at the beginning of the third round. And, you know, whether or not your second round pick ends up being Melvin Gordon or not, you know, you can slip yourself a digs, a wide receiver in there or something like that if what Melvin Gordon's not your fancy or he doesn't fall to you and then reap the rewards of getting Freeman in the third. And if he is your third running back, just like Casey said, you put your you put an RB1 in your flex and you're playing from ahead. All, that's what I want to do all day. I love it. It's, it's like you said, it frees you up. You're so free because when we did the 10 spot, we took Ertz in the three. And 
and then like I, I I stated when we when he came back to pick four, I felt like we needed to grab the running back there. I think we took McKinnon. Right. Like right. We needed to get a third running back, and and this frees us up the rest of the draft to not be like trying to find that because we're really concerned about having a great third running back. I want a flex baller right at the rb spot a consistent point picker upper right and when you can oh. do that off the rip in the first three picks it's just yeah beautiful all right so we take the uh Devontae freeman want you to know. <laughs> and so 18 picks are going to fall off and then we're going to be able to look around at some wide receivers and be able to spread our wings and maybe zach Ertz falls but he doesn't and here we are and we're looking around and we're like wait a wait a minute wait a damn minute here <laughs> yeah, so we wanted Geis in the last time we did this in the fourth round, and he wasn't available. He's available here, which tickles our fancy quite a bit. Um, some of our other choices here are Marvin Jones, Demarius Thomas, Cooper Cup, Funchess, Parker. The other notable running backs are Henry, Chubb, Ingram, and Coleman. Um, so we slew of guys here that you could choose from, um, but in, in my opinion, again, I'd be kind of looking at some receivers you see Rashad Penny go off the board. Are you ever taking Rashad Penny in this area? No way. Not over guys. Absolutely not. I mean, I'm not. just not I've usually not even considering him in this area. No. Like, I'm well, just going to take somebody else. To be greedy, obviously, I'm hoping that Doug Baldwin falls to us at 410. Doesn't sure. happen. We had a nice debate about that yeah. last week. And that was even in the 310, 43 spot. Yeah. You know? But now here we are at 410. I was just being greedy, hoping that we could get lucky and Baldwin would fall to us. Not even close. But we're sitting here and we're like, all right, well... Geis is on the board, and obviously we were going to look at Golden Tate, Demarius Thomas, Marvin Jones. Like that was our that was our plans, but we have four spots right, to go. Exactly, that's the, the key here. The key, exactly, the key is is I love being near one of the ends, and so you're like you can basically carve it out. Demarius Thomas, Marvin Jones, Golden Tate. One of those guys are going right. to be here when we get back. It's very unlikely all three of them will go in the next four picks. Exactly. And, there's a decent stack of backs here, and there's three wide receivers who are okay with having, and more than likely the chances of us missing out on all those receivers that we want and are comfortable with being Demarius Thomas, Golden Tate, and Marvin Jones is pretty unlikely at this point in time. Right. Um, so to me, the choice keeps getting clearer and clearer that I want to go Darius Geis here. One quick question is, is Devontae Parker working here anywhere for anybody? I do believe he's got a pretty easy path to here's, solid wide receiver one here's with thing. not much competition. In October, when we get in we're four weeks into the season, it might be an obvious glaring yes, Devontae Parker would have been a great pick here. You know. But I think you got some stuff here on Darius Geis to tell us why he's a pretty safe pick as a fourth running back. Like there's gonna be people that are lis listening to this and watching this video that are like screaming at the screen and like or screaming back into their he earphones and be like, How are you gonna go four picks running back in a row? Well, but, we'll get into that in a little bit. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. But that's the of thing. Why it's, we're doing that. But it, but if you think take 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 back up out of it for just a second, philosophy wise, and be like, you know, just have an open mind and think about the starting lineup of a fantasy football team and think about in the week that you're playing and you see our team rolling in and you see Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, Devontae Freeman, and if Darius Geis is a beast like he's supposed right. to be, good luck. And it doesn't matter who we put in our wide receiver he's spot not because even, there are catches everywhere. He's not even going to probably be starting in our lineup for the most part unless he is an absolute beast right off the rip. Like exactly. We're going right. to find another running back who we'd rather start or probably an, another receiver who's going to be in our second flex. Per well said. Perfectly said. He's not but Just because he's our fourth guy doesn't mean he's going to be in Gotta our Got to have depth. Hey, he, right. Yes. And this depth Devontae Freeman pick in the third round totally freed us up to take Darius Geis here because we don't need him. We don't need him right. to be our third running back. I don't love Darius Geis as my third running back. I mean, it's 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 I like it, okay, but I, I mean, I just like having a ticket to the Darius Geis show. That's right. why I'm totally in on this. There's you need a ticket to the Saquon show, and you got to get a ticket to the Darius Geis show. You had four rounds here in between the number one consensus rookie pick and pretty much the number two consensus rookie pick, and some people don't see that big of a gap. But so, exactly. not me or you guys, but right. some people don't see that big of a gap between guys. It's definitely exactly. a gap, but I mean, there's and then there's I to me there's a definite gap between those two guys and everybody else well situate give me give me nick chubb in the talent standpoint but situation he falls way down based on what's going on in cleveland but look at the screen there if you're not if you're you know if this isn't get off the you know go from the podcast check out the video like casey said and follow website. along it's fun yeah go to the website pull up the draft board you can't see that part on the draft board though the bit like the best 
pick that this guy's ever had in these type of mock drafts, Darius Geis is above all those receivers. Like somebody's taken shots right. on Darius Geis before thinking the same thing we're thinking here. And he's a potential absolute workhorse stud. And, you know, there's there's a lot of room there for him to be a producer. And like Jay Wayne said, we really don't need him. But And we he, were basically luxury picking if, here in the third round. Right. That's how balling we are. If he this. hits, then we are so deep at running back. Right. So there's there's a couple of reasons why I'm I'm digging this pick. One is the f- first and foremost there's a great talent here. He's a home run hitter, which he's going to hit. There's not a anybody really threatening a high attempt volume for guys. Chris Thompson's in town. Um but he's not really a run, a, a run threat. Like his rushing attempts all of last year were 64. Um he that was in 10 games. Um but in those 10 games, he had double digit hit the double digit mark once. And that was, I believe, when P. Ryan and Kelly went down playing San Francisco. Um, and in the rest of the games, he had nine and eight and every other game, f- five carries and f- under five carries in five games. Exactly. So nobody's like P. Ryan's not coming in and taking carries away. Like they just drafted this guy. They're going to give him his run. Are you Chris Thompson's not coming in and taking? Carries well, no, I'm, neither is P. Ryan right, or Kelly. Right. Like nobody's coming. Like he's got he's got an easy path to getting a bunch of carries. Now, maybe he's not in there on all downs to start, but I don't think that there's he might not be in the upper echelon of pass catching backs as a rookie or but there's an easy path to 30, 40 receptions here for him because he's going to be on the field a good bit. You had P. Ryan last year with 22 receptions on 24 targets. Capri Bibbs with 14 receptions on 17 targets. Uh, Kelly had four receptions on seven targets. Byron Marshall, six receptions on eight targets. Like there's an easy 40 or 50 targets to go around for Darius Geis. And if he's just going to stay on the field, like I think he will, right. obviously Thomas will come in on third downs and stuff like that. But there's going to be plenty of check downs for old Alex Smith to check it down to. And to add to all that, there's nobody to take away goal line work from him. Sure. Who's taking away goal line work? And nobody. there's like three solid pieces on the offensive line here. You got Trent Williams, who's one of the best left tackles in the game. You got Brandon Sheriff on the right side and you got Morgan Moses on the right side. You know? Well, let me let me let me just pause the fun on the on the guys pick in the fourth round because this is the forty sixth overall pick that we take him at and the DLF ADP is at like thirty and he doesn't get close to the like the closest he gets to this is thirty four. So this is a mock draft on a really, really cool platform here. And maybe he doesn't stick around to this spot, but this is what we had to work with. And so this is where you, you do your practice reps. So if you are just happen to be sitting around at 410 and, and you're drafting, and you're like, oh my God, Darius Geis is on the board. This is how you should be reacting. Right. Right. To take him. The, so yeah, maybe sure. this is a little bit slanted now that we have Darius Geis as our fourth pick. And of course, you you know, you can't plan for that. And it, you know, if it didn't happen, we, we, okay, we'd have one more better receiver or something right. like that. But it is what it is. He's in front of us and we're going to take him. He probably will go before the fourth to 410 in your draft right and, and i'm okay with any of the res- like we said in the beginning of this i'm okay with any of the receivers that are going to uh be left whether it be marvin dt or golden tate as my as my first receiver off the board here um and um there's a bunch of other running backs so probably in between there maybe a running back or two and maybe a quarterback maybe you know between these four picks that are going to fall off i'm going to get enough to take a pick at one of those receivers that i want absolutely so right. I'm taking the guy I want right now and can't don't want to miss on who was the clear cut pick and guys, and I'm gonna roll the dice on the next four slots. Sounds good. Absolutely. So we're definitely taking our boy guys here. I'm gonna watch uh, four picks fall off the board. There goes Devontae Parker, Sony Michelle, Aaron Rodgers, Nick Chubb. So we still have our pick of the litter here with these wide receivers. Right. And we've 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 had this discussion last week. We've had this discussion on ADP talks. The kind of Marvin versus Golden versus Demarius Thomas. Uh, the Cliff Notes version is basically we usually don't let age decide this for us. But Marvin's kind of the youngest. He's got a ton of upside. He was a receiver one last year. Exactly. Um, Demarius Thomas is a little older. They probably have similar uh, kind of floors to me, but the or ceilings to me. I think I think Marvin Jones and Demarius Thomas's ceilings they're just going to get there in two different ways. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Golden Tate. Maybe Golden Tate you like a little more because you like the safety of all those catches, but he could be out of town next year. Marvin's hanging around with Stafford for at yeah. least probably till twenty twenty. So we definitely take uh, our boy Marvin Jones. Let's go ahead and hit play on this guy. He comes off the board, and then eighteen picks, a couple a quarterbacks, slew. Njoku, Hunter Henry. On somebody can put. If 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 you're taking Hunter Henry and you're sticking him right in your IR spot, if you're in a short bench league, I don't hate it. No, I don't. I don't hate it either. I think 
Obviously, the biggest dagger for us right here is old Bobby Woods. Oh, it crushed me. Just sticking us in the side here, going at 6-3. Uh, six, three. Three. Super early. So couldn't have a couldn't have a shot at him. I know that's somebody that Big Co likes to pair up with his kind of first two receivers. He likes to get a you know a, a Marvin Jones and a, and a and a Bobby Woods. Oh, give it to me. Um, so that was a bummer. But we're left with some some decent choices here. Shepard goes. Demarius Thomas goes. Uh, Robert Woods goes. But we got Crowder. We got Luck. Uh, we're left with Coleman, Ajay, Drake, uh, Collins as running backs. Carry on still on the board. Wouldn't mind getting a piece of him, but. Probably not right here. Uh, there's decent amount of running backs left on the board here, and we revisit the pick and four uh, picks falling off the board. So we're we're basically kind of looking at running back or uh, wide receiver mostly here. We got four running backs on our team. We just took our first receiver. It looks like maybe we're going to sift this down, and we're really looking at Will Fuller here. Right. Well, like you said, the, you know, we only had four picks. No, we had a bunch of picks fall off, and now we got – we got two picks here out of the next six guys. The same type of being on the end, so we can kind of, stri- you know, strategically angle ourselves into who do we want first? Because who do we think will will be there in the in you know in four picks when they fall off? And so we we're looking at the upside of Will Fuller, and obviously which is tremendous, which is tremendous. And uh, you know, it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people that will say that you know they're. The regression is due in the Houston offense. What was going on when Deshaun Watson was in there was unsustainable. And obviously that's true. It's un- that type of rate is unsustainable. Regression. And you know, and, and and it's 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 definitely true. But the fact that you got, you know, just an absolute monster in DeAndre Hopkins that takes about three people to defend, you know, securely. And Deshaun Watson's eyes and vision and, and legs, legs can keep plays and, alive. An extreme amount of just not. I mean, it's just he just. I don't want to call it just. It's not being a gamer, but like knowing where to go with the ball under right. pressure and like being poised. Right. And, I was you know, watching just the, not being affected by the breakdown of the play. It's so crazy. Like a, somebody that young, right? Handling. I what's caught him going on the top one hundred just for a second. I don't watch too much of that, but I was flipping I through and he was on it. And I caught a little top one hundred, and that like the players were all just saying like just how calm he is exactly. for a rookie is just. You say Ridiculous. you don't watch it, but this is the second week you in know a row you gonna, referenced it. Well, there's you nothing on it. right now, and I, I flip through. <laughs> I, I never stay it. for the whole thing. I flip around. Yeah, well, uh, that, exactly what I was trying to say there, and it's you know the players know it better than I do, of course. But that, So we're, we're well, eyeing up an all-upside pick here, basically, at wide receiver where we're looking to right. add a little depth it's to. A, it's a bit of a luxury pick again with Will Fuller because it's just the ultimate home run cut. But, I mean, right. you just... He looks like his hands are getting a little better. He's catching right. the ball. Got the yips taken care of, it looks like, which and was a huge knock for eat through all through college and the first couple of years in the pros here. But I can't believe you don't need a ton of velocity to deliver a good deep ball. So once Deshaun had disproved that, and you could <laughs> see these bombs just being launched out of the sky. Yeah. And Will Fuller's connecting with him. And obviously he couldn't sustain that run of touchdowns that he was on. But, I mean... It's somewhere around there. I mean, he's going to score some touchdowns. He's going to hit some big plays. And when we've got the kind of lineup that we do, if Will Fuller catches a touchdown, we're winning for sure. Right. And if he do, if he doesn't... Just a high upside right, play. Right. If Which he doesn't probably, crush it, at the end of the day, maybe he doesn't end up being the guy we're starting in our wide receiver two spot because we're probably going to find somebody maybe a little bit more consistent that we like to put in that spot. But, I mean, he, he'll easily be a, a flex starter for our second flex starter for most weeks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Well, like if 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 he hits back to the weeks, he, he was never a volume player. Like even last uh, last week, last year when he was crushing it with Deshaun, like his most catches he had in one game was five. Yeah. But it was like four catches for 35, two touchdowns, two for 57, two touchdowns. Like that's sick. In two games, he had six catches. Four of them were touchdowns. And the, oh yeah, well, touchdown rate has regressed. Sure. But that's his role in this offense is to stretch right. the field, two for 62 and a touch. And then uh, at Seattle, no less, at C- this was Deshaun's coming out party of being like, when it was real. I can't believe he just went to Seattle and did that. He went five for a buck 25 and two touchdowns yeah and it's just like yeah none of those are monster catch numbers it's not a ppr machine but this is like deshaun jackson on steroids over here yeah and again it comes i was saying this earlier and i kind of got tangenty and you know you guys jumped in it's if the if the you know the regression is there for the efficiency okay but this guy is one that when you're putting 40 yard bombs in the end zone 
then you're taking plays away from the offense. And obviously nobody on offense is upset because you just scored a touchdown. Right. But so, so maybe that some of that high-end efficiency comes down, but you still have the legs and the ability of your awesome quarterback stressing the hell out of the defense. You got some very capable running backs. You got DeAndre Hopkins to deal with, and maybe some, you know, some underneath tight end and QTs. Every everybody loves QT as being a you know a field stretcher and stuff. It's like, what are you going to do with Will Fuller? Guy, yeah. What are you going to do with Will Fuller? It's tough to get. How are you going to guard him? Guy on him. How you, exactly? Exa- how are you going to guard Will Fuller? And you saw it. Like you could not guard him and pay attention to Hopkins right. and watch out for Deshaun and his legs. That's why it works. If and Will, the deep ball accuracy, Will Fuller oh, does yeah. not. He's not. He doesn't need eight targets a game. Right. And if you look at that numbers from week four to week eight, and I know that's a very small sample size, but that was absolutely on fire. Right. On fire. So maybe you put a little bit of flame retardant it on there it's still well worth a flex so, starter so i like i like calling this a little bit of a luxury pick with just a ton of upside so we're going to take fuller here but i guess the big question is is there's going to be four picks that fall off the board and we decide not to take tevin coleman here even though we have Dante uh, Devonte foreman or sure. freeman freeman do you guys have any regrets i think that was my first regret of the draft is that maybe i would rather have tevin coleman who's also a luxury pick in my opinion but we have freeman here um, you got a guy who we've talked about who could easily be the McKinnon of next year. He's going to be a free agent, could go wherever he wants and be the one A and not be the one B anymore. And there was so much love for this guy. His ADP has stayed in a pretty good range. It's kind of all over the place, but it stayed pretty solid for what he's been. And the upside that people like out of this guy and the fanfare for this guy was pretty high. It's kind of tapered off a little bit, but it could explode again this year. And then going into free agency, he could be everywhere, every bit what Jarek McKinnon is. Right. Well, we had some of that conversation last week too, about Tevin Coleman. We ended up when he was on that team, we took that player. Um, So do you guys have regrets? Would you rather have Tevin Coleman or Will Fuller here? Obviously looking back on it. That's a tough one because we do only have one wide receiver. I I think, I think we probably should have taken Tevin Coleman and maybe Will Fuller falls off, gets to us in the next four picks. But, you know, we take Will Fuller and, and then, spoiler alert, Tevin Coleman gets drafted right. within the next four picks and we don't get to grab him with the turn here. So it's it's a bit of a bummer. Right. And, you know, we've done an. So regrets or no regrets? I got some regrets. I don't have a ton of regrets because right. I think <laughs> that's. That's a that's a sixth rounder we're talking about. And of course, yes, we have Devontae Freeman. So all the things that could happen. Either Freeman goes down, Tevin steps in, he's an RB one. Tevin stays healthy, he's a potential RB two flex starter if we need him. Tevin stays healthy, everything's good. He goes to another team, he's his own man next year, and Devontae Freeman's still on our team. All those things could play out. But I think the the really the spot where we took Tevin Coleman might have been a round or two later than this last yeah. draft. So I I to me the upside of the Will Fuller putting him in in the wide receiver spot for uh, for me feels really good because like you know yes it's a luxury pick in the sixth round it sounds a little cocky it's two luxury items but here. we just know we know that the back half of this draft we know that the depth that we build so we do want to take upside plays here as at the same time a nice combination of safety and I guess at the end of the day when we get done looking at our seventh and eighth round picks mm-hmm. then maybe I can be Makes like you feel right, a little better yeah, about yeah if, if I could swap out Will Fuller for see Tevin, the hindsight of what it, happens when we uh, we basically test the waters to see if we can get lucky with our it, it pick eight ten with a player we were debating on taking at 7-3, stays on to hang around for us at 8-10. It's called a tease. It is a tease. Then we could swap out Tevin Coleman. But not knowing if I'm going to get lucky on my eighth-round pick and be extremely happy with the position we put ourselves in regarding wide receivers, I'm a, I'm really still happy with the Will Fuller. I'm not pick. really upset either way, but Tevin, this is kind of the first time where I had some buyer's remorse maybe just for a minute. So let's see what happens here. So we take Will Fuller and... As mentioned, Tevin Coleman goes off the board. Right before us. Daggered. This, this program knew we needed him. Right. Right before us. They, they certainly did. They knew not to let us get him. But in, in, <laughs> but really, we're looking at here now, we just took the high upside Will Fuller pick because uh, it, basically if Will Fuller is doing what he wants, is doing 75% of what he was doing last year. He's in your starting lineup. And if not, then you probably be a little dicey and we can stick him on the bench for a minute. You want a little safer play. Maybe going to go a little next. bit of going to go, going to go PPR floor to compliment the Will Fuller pick. So, and obviously let the cat out of the bag. The guy we were looking at to get in this seven, three pick would be Larry Fitzgerald. We do not take him here. Yep. Uh, we're is a heavy debate on Crowder or Fitzgerald. 
Right. We're heavily debating Jamison Crowder, Fitzgerald, and the biggest thing was Crowder's 25, Fitzgerald's 34. So basically, and I know this is a mock draft, so we have no ability to do any trades, but I was like, y'all boys, if we were in this, if this is real right now, we'd have to take Crowder and then let it play out. And if Fitzgerald doesn't make it back to us, then we could potentially go try to make a trade for the right. for the W for the WR wide for the WR one three years in a row for the Hall of Famer. We could go make a trade if well, he doesn't years, make it I'm back not sure to what us. It was. Right, and here's an, a little bit more of playing like I mean, no matter what, unless you're just in a room with all your buddies doing a draft, and everyone brought their own list to the draft board, that's going to be the most randomized kind of picking that you'll ever see but if you're on a platform good any kind of platform good point there's, there's going to be a list that everybody's looking at it's they might really going to f you in the a sometimes they're not going to follow is. it to a t no. everybody has their guys but they but will when you don't know they're you like s- the guy that's up top exactly. right and so looking at this board if you're on the video i yes. paused it for your pleasure here yes larry fitzgerald's all the way down to 56 Preach. and crowder's up here at 37 yep and it's a long 18 picks before our next pick and we're like you know we we already have two wide receivers, so it's not like we're looking for a starter here and we need Larry for this year to start, which we were kind of in that position in the 10 spot. We needed Larry, and right. we took him a little bit earlier because we didn't want to risk him falling. But here we're like, let's go ahead and get this upside young guy. Right. Could be Alex Smith's boy. He likes to to work that middle of the field, and, and him and Crowder could really just crush it together. So we end up taking Crowder, but we, we bring it down to basically a Drake, Crowder, Fitz, carry-ons on the board who I'm – pretty interested in but we're, we're back heavy already uh, which i don't mind taking another back here but we kind of took the will fuller guy with the high upside and just like jay wayne and we've been alluding to like crowder obviously was probably a, a fourth round pick last year yeah didn't work out Ear- simmered out fourth, a little bit but he fifth. was had a hammy in the coming into the season wasn't right all season i think you're going to see a little bit better crowder this season and I, I i like what could be the potentially safe floor of crowder's ppr <laughs> um, so Crowder got my vote here. I think Crowder got Jay Wayne's vote here. Well, I think Jay Wayne said it perfectly. You look at your platform wherever you're doing the draft, and if you like Crowder there and he's the top wide receiver available and 18 picks are going off, obviously there's no chance you get him. We really wanted the stability of potential you, stability. Well, the, no, we. I really was like, hey, if we get Larry Fitzgerald yeah, here, okay. Larry Fitzgerald slides in above Marvin Jones, just like he did for us last week. He would come in and make Will Fuller on our bench, which is what we wanted to do here. We wanted to take, we took Will Fuller's upside where we thought we had to take him to get him on our team. But then you go down and get somebody a little safer, right? With you know, which is why I was saying he's probably not going to stay in our two exactly. spot there. We're probably exactly. going to get a guy like Larry to put in there who's what well, has James been a WR one yeah. and Marvin Jones who's been a WR one. Yep. It's not about the the name cachet of these guys. It's not about the rounds where you pick right. these receivers. It's how they fall out and how what what's going to happen. What on they the can week actually week do basis. for you, yeah. exactly. So their actual production for it's not about the it's not a popularity contest. Right. It's not a popularity contest. It's about who's going to score the most points in my roster every week. And so you go and we grab the Jameson Crowder pick. And then we get lucky, and our boy Larry hangs around. Well, we, we really roll the dice. We do roll the dice. But again, like I said, obviously this is mock. But in a real draft, we got to take Crowder. If we were a little – if we had to tight end already, like Jay Wayne said last week, if we had to tight end already and we were feeling a little dicier, then I can see grabbing Fitzgerald for the automatic, definite stability of the wide receiver room. But we don't necessarily need it because we still already have two wide receivers – you got the Larry Fitzgerald potentially coming back around. If he doesn't make it, then we could pretend, you know go make a trade if it was a real draft. So taking the Crowder was right. You know you get the opposite of Fuller. He gets a little safe. Exactly. There's there's a decent amount of upside. People loved Crowder. You just needed him to come out there and be that PPR kind of Golden Tate kind of guy that everyone was expecting him to be. Yep. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and reach for here as our as the third wide receiver on our team, which is the kind of the opposite of what we were doing in the last draft where we were, you know, we didn't have three wide receivers until maybe a couple rounds from now. Right. So we're about to have our four wide receivers in this next round. So we take Jameson Crowder here and we patiently wait for 18 picks to go off the board. Oh, we're counting them down. Just the tumbling dice right now. And guess who's still there? No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. It's Larry. Larry's still there. Oh, it's Christmas came early. Yeah. Christmas or wedding season. Uh, Wedding season. (laughs) Because I'd find you. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with Larry. We we rolled the dice a little bit. 
tried and true. He's been a receiver one for the last three years in a row, I three think. Three years in a row. If you're watching the video, I tried to get rid of everybody up there to just put Larry up by himself. But <laughs> once you remove everyone, it adds a whole new slew of people up there. So that didn't... Larry deserves a pedestal by himself. Yeah. I mean, this is a fantastic <laughs> pick for us. There's, I don't want to miss Larry in many drafts. I just feel like it's great depth. He could do anything you need him to do. He could be your receiver one if you need him to be. What more could you say? Well, he's going to be. He's our. He's probably our most dependable best wide receiver here. Absolutely. I mean, he steps right in to be our number one wide receiver. Obviously, you're going to sit, you know, the people that are maybe drafting for the anti-win now regime want nothing to do with Larry Fitzgerald. But there's <laughs> that, you know, if, if I like the way you put that, the anti-win now regime. Well, you know, it's there. I, I understand that they call it the productive struggle and, you know, hey, I'm going I'm to go draft all these young guys and then I'm going to not do well and I'm going to get a high draft pick. And if that would, you know, that I you. That, that can work in time and possibly. Right. But if some of the young guys you pick are great, good. And if some of the young guys you pick aren't good, then you've... You, the biggest thing is I don't I don't do this stuff for twenty dollars. You right. know what I mean. So I, I'm I'm rolling around in some you know I'm two, trying to win two fifty five hundred dollar leagues. Yeah. And, and in that you know, in that so. strategy, the Larry is the clear cut favorite in the style that I'm drafting in this in this area of picking. Like, give me the Larry. Exactly. Exactly. Give me all the Larry. Yeah. I'll take him. I mean, he just, the Roto World blurb just came out said he is could or would. Play more. Years. I mean, he just wants to see how it goes. He's open to it, right? Which is all I was yelling a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, and so I could see this ADP creeping up a little bit to get him in the eighth round. Steal, fantastic. Let me get it. If and we we lingered. If you were watching the video on the on the last pick, that that mouse button was over the draft for Larry in the seventh hovering. round. Yeah, a lot of hovering over and Larry. We almost took him. We spent a lot of time debating that pick, and then and then ultimately went with Crowder and got rewarded. Just like just like we said, Larry's that number fifty six wide receiver on the board. We get him. It's awesome. So we go ahead and take him. Let's move along. Went four, four backs. We went four receivers. We're ready to roll. Absolutely. Next pick, we got four guys that are going to fall off the board. We're nine three here. Uh, those guys are Kelvin Benjamin, who, you know what, really not a terrible pick, decent value at this point in time. Really, I don't love the Bills' offense, but there's really nobody over there. It's a good call. So, not, I mean, volume based, not a terrible pick. He's obviously a red zone threat, just not on my to do list. Not a terrible pick. So, like, we're back at nine three. We kind of have our options wide open here. We went four right. running backs. We've got four receivers. Um, Royce is the only running back that goes off the board that we really care about, or I think at all. Yeah, so Royce goes off the board here. Um, you know, so we could really take Drake, Lamar, Alex Collins, Duke, or carry on Johnson. And when really what this boils down to for us is I like Lamar and I like Alex Collins, but it boils down to me for Kenyon Drake and carry on Johnson. carry on Johnson and Kenyon Drake. Yeah, um, just. I think there's a ton of upside for both of those guys, and I, we don't need anybody. Again, a little bit more of a luxury pick. If I, you know, Lamar Miller would be my choice if I needed to have a guy who I needed was to trying on. to lean on at this exactly. point. Probably, if you, needed, if you needed a potential RB two starter, Lamar Miller would be a, a good pick. But you see the disrespect, and you know, obviously every draft is different. You don't know who's taking him, but how can you take somebody, you know? There's no reason to plant your flag on Lamar Miller and reach for him. Just let him right. continue to fall down your board and and be happy if you you know if he's a you know fifth, sixth, seventh running back on your team, then you are re looking ridiculously good. One one quick thing back to Larry Fitz. I know we're trying to move this thing along, but we we decided to pass on Larry Fitz and take Jameson Crowder. Another reason is is if he didn't fall, we could probably go trade for Larry. Right. You Big know, Co mentioned that he did mention yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Well, stuff yeah. Back up. yeah right, when when you just, just disregard that, let's when you move when you get out of the draft, when you get or away not. from the draft, the capital, the the trade capital that it takes to pick up Larry Fitzgerald is a lot less than what it takes to draft him right there. And I understand that we had that conversation. Even if you if somebody takes him earlier in your startup draft than you think he should be taken, give it two or three weeks into season. If that team's not doing right. well, strike. Then Gotta you go. Strike. Then you can go pick up Larry for sure. Right. You took him a little bit too early. All right. So this is coming down to Kenyon Drake and Carry On Johnson. We inevitably we choose Drake. Right. Um, we've seen gonna, him do it a little we, bit. We've seen him do it. He was super efficient. We've we've talked about Drake. We talked about Drake on the Lack podcast of of why we liked him. I love Carry on Johnson, one of my favorite rookies. 
Um, but we're gonna we're gonna roll the dice with with Drake here at nine three and see if Carry On could get back to us possibly. But you know we're starting to maybe look at addressing a tight end here in the next pick or two. So let's see what happens. And here. I love having Kenyon Drake as as our fifth running back. That's just spectacular. Just How could you not? If he hits, it's money in the bank. Right. We yeah. can go get whoever we want with him if we wanted to change something up. All right. Yeah, we're going to take this stab on Drake right here and pad our bench for potential starters for our starting lineup because that's what it's all about. Obviously, you know, halfway through the season, carry on Johnson could come back and roar his ugly head, and that might have been the pick. But right now we liked what Kenyon Drake did on film last year with the efficiency stats, as we mentioned last week in the other draft pick. Uh, in the, uh, the other mock draft where we took Drake later, about the same spot in the draft. If you're in the ninth or tenth round of your draft you, and you're coming around with Kenyon Drake as a, you know, a, a bench player on your team, you can't be happier. Yeah, I'm super stoked about that pick. I wouldn't have been upset with Carryon Johnson either. We Who voted. goes ra- off right, right after we take right. Drake. Right. So I mentioned the tight end before. You know, maybe maybe starting to consider him a little bit. And if you don't get one of those top guys like an Ertz or a Kelsey, which Unless it's premium, I'm more of a back end tight end guy anyway. Last last week we took Ertz in the third round. Some every once in a while, you know, I might get a little wild hair up my tuchus and <laughs> draft a tight end. But you guys outvoted me two to one on on the on the tight end there to well, draft and to set it and forget it, which I understand. Jump in and out real quick, and and I really should have stressed this last week to in that debate there. I'm that was me trying to pretend in a, basically a tight end premium format. Yeah. Like that was me trying to shade. I play we we play a lot of FFPC and it's 1.5 PPR for tight ends and that was me basically trying to shade towards the tight end premium to build right. my roster like that. But I'm still not necessarily upset with getting an Ertz up at the top of the draft, but I, you know. No, but I mean, yeah, you, everybody's I'm typically a bottom bottom end tight end drafter in in non premium. I can't argue with you. Um, so basically Burton is a guy who ends up on almost all my teams. We've seen a, an ADP rise here and we'll, we'll talk about that on a, on, on the podcast, uh, debating some of these picks, uh, after this show here, but Burton hanging around at 10, 10 is a no brainer to me. He's he's, he's cheap enough. He's yeah. in a system. He's he's very athletic. He's in a system who just paid him a lot of money. Who those the the two head coaches Peterson and Nagy know each other. They know they what they kind of want to do, and it's kind of a tight end centric system that they're probably going to try to execute over there in in uh, Chicago. Absolutely. Um, and there's really you know you got a rookie in in uh, Anthony Miller over there, and it's it's Allen Robinson is right. is the only other person really going to take targets away from him. And Trubisky is a, is a fun guy to, you know, he's athletic. He's got an arm. We'll see what he can do with the, with the chains off him this year. But Burton to me is a no brainer at, at this sort of ADP with the upside. And I can, you'll see, as we go down this draft a little later, I can come back and draft a couple other tight ends. If Burton doesn't work out for some other reason, I can get a, you know, a Jared cook kind of a player later down the line, or, or, you know, you could have got, you could have get a Kittle in a couple of rounds or you could get a Cameron Bray you know, a little yeah, later. Yeah. So you can back him up with, with some other later guys, but the upside and the, the cheapness of Burton is all that combined is just a no brainer for me. Yeah, I totally agree that he's got the, he's got the paid capital. They've paid him a bunch of money. He's in the, the scheme where they want to feature the tight end. Good offense. Well, could, could be a good offense. I don't know. But like, We're expecting it to be a good offense. But even better. if it isn't a great offense, like I still think he's going to get plenty of volume. Tight end, still, sure. still a quarterback's best friend. And we're, we're in a bit of a no-man's land here in this draft. And it's like we don't have a tight end yet. You look at the running backs, and I kind of I stopped it right here for you, Casey, because I know you kind of wanted to make a point here about these running backs. I don't know if you want to save that for later. But, I mean, it, like save we're always looking pick. at the running back picks – but there's just not that much going on right now. It's starting to dry up. It dries up real quick, which is why we took four in a row anyway. We'll, we'll, I'll, let you, I'll save that for a little bit. Um, but I, I'm more than happy Trey Burton got my vote. Um, I think he was pretty much the consensus pick here. I like Marquise Lee, but we went four receivers in a row here. Mm-hmm. And I'm so definitely much okay for with us. adding Trey Burton onto the squad here and, and getting a high upside guy here, in my opinion. Right. So we take him. 
Four picks go off the board. Kenny Stills at 11-1. That's a guy we're always kind of targeting in late, right. late in drafts. We jumped and, up there a little, little early on Kenny. Yeah. Well, just like we said in last week's mock draft, we got him in the maybe 14th round, and we were say, I said, wouldn't surprise me if you had to take him in the 11th to get him. He goes 11-1 right here. Right. And goes right back to what uh, the example of when you're in these things, just give a basically a, a three-round – Cushion, uh, cushion in either Sliding direction. Scale. Once, yes, it, either either direction. Once you get past the first couple rounds, it, it's a fair game. You know, if you want somebody, take them. If there's a couple picks between your picks, maybe you can play some games. But if you got the 18 picks between your time, get the guy you need to have because it, it's fair game. Right. So in this pick, you know, I, I don't, I definitely don't really hate going back to back on tight ends and maybe taking a Greg Olson to go with a Trey Burton kind of a deal here but in a one tight end no premium i'm going to roll the dice with trey burton i'll probably pass on olsen and i'm just going to like i said draft a, a tight end a little later yeah i don't really see myself grabbing olsen in any dynasty startup this year he's already bu- tried to put one foot in the in the broadcast and yeah. i know he signed a two-year deal and if it if it hits it hits but there's a lot more targets in there now for the panthers and i just i don't trust it so basically these choices kind of come down to mark Lee, uh jamal williams ty montgomery cam meredith and Kittle, um, and we debate this we one. We did debate Kittle. We, we debate this one for a little while here. Doubling but, down. Um, essentially, we we want to target another running back here. Surprise, surprise. Um, and it kind of comes down to Jamal or Ty Montgomery here. And what what was your? I know you're a Jamal guy. I mean, it, this is a tough one for me. The 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 Packers running backs. I know I want a piece of that backfield. They've all shown that they can kind of get it done. I have Aaron Jones and Ty Montgomery in a dynasty league, and and part of me just wishes I had Jamal right. because you know you're you're missing you're missing Aaron Jones for two games. He got popped. He's out of there. Ty Montgomery still in the running back spot in the in the designation, so I'm loving that. Um, and but but Jamal's just he's just trusty old great at pass protection. Can catch the ball. Can grind it out. Has good vision. He's got moves. I just he showed super well. I would loved everything I saw from him last year, and I could I could really I'd be down to take Jamal. We I think I don't know if it was two to one or if you got my vote for Ty Montgomery. I'm not sure exactly how that went down, but we go Ty Montgomery ultimately. I guess we because do, of this this the upside. We the, do. There's a there's a ton of upside with Ty Montgomery. Um, we got a pretty balanced team so far, and we kind of do whatever we want, but. I kind of lean Ty Montgomery for just a cu- more upside, like you mentioned. The the court of public appeal for right. Jamal Williams is not really what it was for Ty Montgomery, who was a fourth round pick last year. Exactly. Um, and there's you know Aaron Jones has popped for two games, and Randall Cobb's already in a walking boot. This well, is a guy right. who's very versatile. He could he could see snaps as a receiver, no problem next year, and he could be Aaron Rodgers' go to guy right by so, week three. A lot of the success that Jamal Williams had last year was they handed it to him three times at the goal line. That's never going to happen with, with Aaron, Aaron Rodgers in there. That was with that was with the backup, and you know. Last year, Casey broke down for us like what the Packers like to do from an offensive standpoint, and it's like they rushed the ball inside the forty less than any other team in the league. At least last year, well, with, with Aaron Rodgers, yeah. with Aaron Rodgers in there, yeah, for sure, exactly. When a Rodgers is in there, like it, you got to look at the what they. There's two different offenses, you know. When Aaron Rodgers is in there, you got maybe the best physical, talented quarterback to ever play the game when it comes to just attributes, and it's a spread them out. Let me just make plays like this. All it's it's, a, it's crazy the lack of script that it seems is going on for the Packers, and that plays right into Ty Montgomery from the running back position. And just like you said, the Randall Cobb in a walking boot. Like if Randall Cobb's hurt, Ty Montgomery's going to be on the field every single snap, but as long as he's not hurt, and and even even with Randall Cobb healthy, Ty Montgomery's probably going to be on the field a plenty. So that was my thing. The upside on Ty Montgomery and the PPR, the catches and everything, like Ty Montgomery. He wasn't really carrying the load last year from a carry standpoint, but before he got hurt, his PPR points were ridiculous because he was catching eight or ten a game, and it's like, all right, spread them out and check it down to Ty Montgomery if you don't see anything real quick. And everything was working great until Anthony Barr jumped on his collarbone, and, right? You know, and obviously Ty Montgomery broke his ribs too. But you know, Tyler Ty Montgomery's a two hundred twenty pound man. He was lined up in the backfield as a rookie. 
you know. Yeah. And play he was the a, biggest he, of all those play, guys. Play in that Randall Cobb role before, you know, even Randall Cobb was really hurt. He just in there being basically a mirror image of Randall Cobb. So now you go into this year. I do love what Jamal Williams did last year on the field for those guys. And I we harped on Jamal Williams big time as a rookie coming out as that second round, third round, you know, rookie pick in your drafts to just grab instead of some of those wide receivers and it took half the year for it to pay off but it paid off so i got no problem with either one of these guys but i think if i have to make a choice uh, ty montgomery's my guy yeah i i agree 100 percent. and you know we want to talk about the running back kind of deal for a minute here of just why we kind of strategize on the you know taking the running backs a little earlier because there's you know there's 12 guys that I really love having on my team 12 running backs. 12 running backs that I really love having on my team. Then the, the next from 12 to, you know, maybe 20, I'm, I, you know, I'm okay. I like having those guys on my team and I'll, I'll stab on those guys. That's fun. But from there on out, man, it's, it's a little bit of a crapshoot from 20 to, to 32 or whatever. And I don't love all the guys in between there. So just mix them up however you want. But if you want a, a stud running back, you have to be able to you have to make the choice to take those first couple in the first two, three rounds to get that competitive advantage with the running back. If you want to just draft Lamar Miller and have to count on him and go receiver and kind of zero RB, that's fine. But my strategy and our strategy kind of here is, is that we want to get as many of those like top 12 guys that I really want who are difference makers on our team as we can here. And, you know, we take a shot on Ty Montgomery here because we have a balanced team and we can. Right. But exactly. I don't need Ty Montgomery. Well, like, yeah, we we didn't expect Darius Geis to be there in the fourth round for us to go four in a row. But our plan would when we had Melvin Gordon and Devontae Freeman at two and three, we couldn't have been happier. But like you're saying, so in the next four picks, we take four wide receivers in a row. Well, you know, Derek Henry, Mark Ingram, he's suspended. Derek Henry's, a, you know, question mark on actual opportunity and, pe- you know, what he's going to put up for points. And, you know, Ronald Jones, there's a lot to like about him. Carlos Hyde stuck in Cleveland. LaShawn McCoy, really old. Tevin Coleman, yeah, RV2 flex starter. Jay Ajayi, who really knows? And then Tariq Cohen. Those are the running backs that went while we were piling up wide receivers. Right. We didn't have to look at those and make picks. Yeah, we talked about maybe some buyers. We make any of those decisions. We could have had Tevin Coleman. It's going to do work. Yeah, and I like the idea. We don't have to make decisions on when to play any of those guys either. Yeah, and and I like the idea of having Ronald Jones on my team in the fifth round of a startup for a swing. And, you know, if I need to, if I had to go a couple of wide receivers earlier than that. But the fact is, we were able to stack up Marvin Jones, Will Fuller, Jameson Crowder, Larry Fitzgerald because we didn't have to take any backs and and take stabs. You might look at that and say, who are your receivers really? but I'm okay with starting any of those guys. Yeah, and it, and to Casey's point here, we take we take uh, Ty Montgomery, and because he's the last really one there where you feel good about having him in your line, everything, it really turns into a crapshoot after that. So the fact that we're so stacked up, it gives us the ability to be flexible towards the end of the draft and take the chances on the guys that we have in the next 10 picks of our draft and not need running backs, not need to be picking through those satellite backs and, and right. you know, those, hey, yeah, this got theoretic. You know, he had some lightning in the bottle season there, but at the end of the day, like, how did you feel about having him in your lineup last year? Didn't love it. Not good. And now carry ons in town. Right. And now carry ons in town. Exactly. And you know, Mir Mir still is there. Still on the bench. Yeah, still on the well, he's on the bench, but he's on the team, potentially siphoning, you know, potential targets from him. You know, so yeah, it's just Give me the guys that's going to get the ball in their gut, mix it in with some some catches as mu- as much as possible. Give me the highest floor, highest ceiling combination of those guys and put them in my flexes. For sure. All right, well, let's continue on. We take Ty Montgomery because worst case scenario ends up being a wide receiver. And uh, right, let's get to this next pick. For 18 spots fall off the board. So we watch him go. Ball pal, Theo Riddick. No thanks. Marquise Legos, it's a bit of a bummer. Like, like we Himes, passed on them Mark plenty Walton, of times. Don't need any of those guys on my team. Right. So we're in 12 10 here. Um, our choices are Cam Meredith, Rashard Matthews, Edelman, Booker, Kittle, Garcon, John Kelly, who's our handcuff, and Balage. Um, maybe we could have went with the back to back handcuff here because we do have Kelly. And we do have Drake, so we could have went, or we do have uh, Gurley, and we do have Drake, so we could have went Kelly Balage. Um, but I definitely want Kelly, but we're going to kind of wait and push that down a little bit. Hopefully, he can get back to us. Um, really, for me, the obvious thing is Garcon here. I think that was kind of what everyone was saying when we got to this pick. Like, 
I know he's a little old, but and we're we got some older receivers on our team, but I, I feel like it's just too cheap to pass up. Yeah, right? I think I think the Garcon versus Kittle, I think that's the kind of a thing that, you know, at the end of the season last year, Kittle was crushing it. And it's just like, well, does that carry over? Obviously, Garcon was injured, and you know you got um, McKinnon coming in now. So those are two targets that has to play a role here. And you know the Niners don't mind multiple tight ends, right. and they use a fullback and all that stuff. So is if Kittle picks up where he left off, then great. It you know it would have been a great pick. But to Casey's point, we feel but we good. know Garcon's going to pick up where he left off. We we know Garcon's going to get the volume as long as he's healthy. He is a 31 year old coming off a neck injury, but he's already out there running around, so he should be good to go. And the biggest thing is, is obviously Kittle is up there, up the list. The computer screen stopped on the tight ends just a second ago, and Kittle was up there with a lot of guys underneath him. He's probably what you would call in this mock draft is he's fallen, and it probably would have been a really good pick for us, but. There was plenty. There's a couple of tight ends that we had already figured out that we wanted to look at, and we made this pick on purpose, knowing that we might lose Kittle, and saying that Kittle's basically the same gamble that we have on Trey Burton already. Right. So that was the thing. We had already had to get Trey Burton gamble. We could double down on the Kilton Kittle gamble, or we could put definite catches in our lineup with Pierre Garcon, which is the exact like Pierre Garcon could step right into that flex, and we could put right. um, well, um, the guy from Houston on our bench if we if right. it doesn't work out. You know, Will Fuller could go to the bench and then. So I, I, I think, I, like you said, I think Garcon could come in and be a flex. I mean, hell, he might end up being our wide receiver. Might be Larry Fitz and Pierre Garcon flashback circa 2012, baby. <laughs> um, when Garcon, yeah. I mean, obviously my man's getting a little long in the tooth, but when he was out there, he dominated the team and time spent on the field. And yep. what's not even close. Um, and according to player profile, he averaged eight targets per game in only eight games. He had 67 targets. The only other wide receiver on the team with more targets was Goodwin with 105 and Hyde with 88. My man. And they played all year. Right. Goodwin started picking up more and more targets when Garcon got off the field. My man only out targeted Garcon by 40, 30 eight targets yeah. for the whole year. My man played eight games. Carlos Hyde, 88. No other receiver even close to what Pierre Garcon was doing last year. Yeah. Like five out of eight weeks, double digit points, 14.1, 21.2, 17.4, 10.5, 9.9. I can that a double digit point yeah, total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but none, and of, those none of those with good Jimmy QB G. play. None exactly. of those with Jimmy G. Right. And towards the, when Jimmy G gets in there, they threw it more and more accurately. So now all the, the that whole pie gets bigger. Right. So, I mean, the Garcon to me right here is another no brainer for all you wide receivers. Like, this is where we're getting our value in wide receivers. I don't care if you say Garcon's old. Garcon, can contribute on my team any day of the week. Right. And he, here's the here's the last thing about this that, I, and I'll be quiet because I know we we're trying to go. But <laughs> when people start up in dynasties, man, you you got everybody's got too too many young guys, right? Like you got you got too. Hey, well, it's a dynasty, so I took a rookie. Oh, I took a rookie. I took a no way, man. That's just give what me the beginning. Dynasty give me the Larry Fitzgeralds and give me give me the Pierre Garcons. I'll mix it in with the Crowders and the Fullers and the Marvin right. Jones, you know. But give me a couple of veterans where I know that in the middle of the season I got starters. They're not sexy, and it's not a popularity contest. Give me Pierre Garçon. You could take this back-end rookie over here that's 22 years old, and good luck with that. Right. Pierre exactly. is just so awesome. He's just a quality NFL receiver. He's got all the moves. He's dirty after the catch. The toe drag on the sideline is phenomenal. He's a great route runner. He's still got some juice. He, he had a little bit of a foot issue early on in his career, never had surgery, did the whole healing, let it heal on its own, didn't miss a game for four straight years and was crushing it, and then then had this neck injury. And that's like the only right. little bit of reservation. It is a neck injury on a little bit older guy, but you're right. getting him in the... 13th round basically right so yeah if you if you miss in the 13th round it's not the end of the world yeah so we're gonna take garcon here after all the garcon talk yep there he goes four picks are gonna rattle off the board boom 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 and there goes george kittle so that was a bit of a bummer we could have wrapped around but i think at this point we had already decided that no matter what we were doing here we needed to get our handcuff here right right i think that's we talked about a little foreshadowed on the last pick we could have went uh, handcuff there. Four picks fall off the board. We don't want to miss out on John Kelly. He's our favorite handcuff of all these rookies. He's one of our favorite rookie running backs. We just didn't love the landing spot that he landed in, but we got Todd Gurley, so give me my dog. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance you, you want to invest in Gurley at the first pick and then not invest in John Kelly later on, and here you are at the end of the 13th, or the beginning of the 13th round here, 
and there's a couple of players to be had. But if you look at the right hand column of the screen there, it just it just scrolled down on us. But anyway, before this John Kelly pick, Pierre Garçon was our previous pick, and you have a right you have a bench full of starters. That's that's the goal here. That's exactly what I was saying at the last pick about not having a bunch of young guys where it's question marks. Like Pierre Garçon could start. Ty Montgomery is a really good chance of being on your being starting and plugging in for our running back if we need to. Kenyon Drake could start if things work out for him. Larry Fitzgerald's our best wide receiver and he was the fourth one we took. Jamison Crowder's a starter and you know obviously you got our starting lineup but that's that's the goal there. So I couldn't be happier. You plug in John Kelly. If something happens to Todd Gurley, he's going to shoot right in there. And, and we be, took Latavius Murray in a similar spot exactly, in the last draft for Dalvin Cook. just for Dalvin Cook. So that kind of works out for us. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take John Kelly. Boom. There he goes. Someone farted, I think. <laughs> and 18 picks roll off the board. It was Brad Kozlowski. Brad over there in the corner. Too many, too many two for, for his crew. Getting Get a little loose over there. Indigestion. All right, so we'll, we'll bring us back here, Case. Where are we at? We're at 14-10. Uh, we've been passing on Cam Meredith a couple of times here. We mentioned his name. Um, so he's definitely up in the running for us. Um, we kind of got Cameron Braid up in the running for us here, just like we were talking about backing up uh, – Dalvin Trey Cook? Burton oh, no. with <laughs> Dalvin Cook. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I didn't know where you were going with that. We, we were backing up Trey Burton with maybe another startable tight end here. d in the in the in the mix here. Um, Booker in the mix. Maybe Marshawn in the Lynch. <laughs> Marshawn in the Lynch. And uh, Matt Wheels Breida. Falling off. All our pets' heads are falling <laughs> off. <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? Are the soundboard's dead. <laughs> so we, we, we go through some debate here. But we all really, really like Cam Meredith and what could be in that Saints office offense. We like the prospect that he is, how he can be kind of moved all over. He can be in the slot. He's a bigger guy. Um, I think he fits. The, the Saints went and got him, took him from Chicago. Chicago. Um, so we really like him. We don't really need him again. He can Maybe he doesn't come out swinging. It's a new team, and he's coming off an injury. So you can you don't need him to start right away. You can kind of let him work in, see what he's doing a little bit here. I never know what he's doing over there. <laughs> um, but I, I really like the pick of Cam Meredith here. and we, It really came down, I think we were talking about Brayton Lynch is where kind of the other two guys in this area that yeah, we wanted. And, and basically not having any use for everything would have to go south for our team to need to plug in Marshawn Lynch. So we didn't want to invest in that old Which running I, back. I disagree with that necessarily, but we can get into that on the podcast and not, not. Yeah. We can, I, don't, I, I don't know how you disagree with that with all the running backs we got, but yeah, we'll get into that later. So I think we Marshawn's about to crush, we, but we, we, we struck him off the list cause he's old and we don't need a running back. That's not, you know, 34 years old. He's um, not 34, but whatever. So anyway, and then, yeah, like Cameron Bray is a sneaky good late tight end in any league. No matter what, he's good to have on your bench. You'd love to have Cameron Bray on your team. <laughs> Big Co just got some movement. He's solid. We're talking about Bray. But there is also some other decent tight end stabs still out there. Like, I'm going to just keep dropping Jared Cook's name and, and a Ricky Seals-Jones kind of deal. Like, I'm okay with taking those guys. And I have a Trey Burton. So I don't necessarily need Bray, although, again, I don't can't disagree with you. Yeah, Brait's Brait's a great little bench player to have. Um, so but again, basically, this is not a tight end premium league. Right. So that's you don't. We, there's no necess, There's no reason to stack up tight ends in a league where you're not getting a bonus for it. Basically, we love the upside and what Cameron Meredith can do. So he comes down and he's going to essentially be the guy that we narrow it down to here. Um, so what do you guys think, Cameron Brait? Cameron Meredith? Got to go, Cameron Meredith. Oh yeah, took him sure. Definitely taking him. Well, Jay, let's get some Cam Meredith. Boom. I just think it's a good good stack for the team. Like I said, we don't really need him. Uh, he's a versatile player. He could really pan out big for us. We could end up trading him because he's awesome and we don't need him. Or we could end up being just a stud number two, number, number two receiver for us. Absolutely. Never know. Got old Drew Brees down there. All right, so we're moving along. We're moving along. We're at 15-3 here. We don't really need anything. This is probably comes down to being one of the more controversial picks of the entire draft for our crew here. I know uh, Jay Wayne doesn't like it. Hate it. Um, and I didn't like it at first, but then once we started scrolling through all the players left and what we needed and what we had, um, we don't really need a running back. We've just, you know, took Cam Meredith and and uh, Pierre Garcon to kind of 
build a little bit depth in our receiving core. We know we have depth in our running back room. Um, we probably could have maybe tried to strike on another tight end here, but we got Burton. We feel okay about it again. There's more tight ends down the list that we don't mind having. So it kind of comes down. Big Co says, how about Lamar Jackson? And me and Jay Wayne aren't huge Lamar Jackson fans, but this is a purely just as quick of a turnaround and stock shot shoot up as you could possibly have maybe with a pick here we're in kind of no man's land we don't really know what we want to do who we want it's Bray, it's p rich it's gerald everett it's d jacks it's edelman keelan cole lynch seals jones eckler which eckler you know we could use eckler we got melvin gordon but lamar jackson as Corey suggested is just there's nothing but upside to lamar jackson we're obviously not going to use lamar jackson as our starting we quarterback even drafted we're going to get somebody yet. else further down the list here but yeah. it's just it's pure upside and how fast that could turn around into value that's flippable for us into something else. Because as soon as this guy's on the field, it's not about whether I like Lamar Miller or not. It's about Lamar Jackson. Jackson. Lamar Jackson. It's well, it's about how quickly I can turn this into something. And as soon as he's on the field doing something, that's exactly I'm getting rid of it. That's that's exactly right about is the value pick here. And the biggest thing is is even before he's on the field. Like if you took everybody that was on this draft board available and you put them in a rookie free agent draft, none of them are getting picked before Lamar Jackson. And that was basically where we were at was not the if, most if, value the, return the, on value. The, the most available. highly the most highly regarded player left on this entire draft list was Lamar Jackson. Obviously, we we're looking at the quarterbacks and like you know, Matt Ryan is still there. We'd love to take him and put him right in our starting quarterback spot. But with Matt Ryan there, Ben Roethlisberger there, and Alex Smith, like it's the easy pick is take Lamar Jackson. We're going to throw him on our bench and then we can take another, then we can take our starting quarterback later. Right. You know, so I'm, that's, that's re really where the argument came down to was it's just too much value to pass up. It's too much what if to give away here. Well, there's, I don't necessarily, 100% agree with that. This is a deeper bench league, so you know it's not your FFPC league where you're cutting down to 16 minus the kicker and the defense. This is I don't know if it's 25 roster spots or what, um, but you know these guys. I'm not I'm not interested in Lamar Jackson as as my quarterback i just i don't think yeah i don't I, think he sees the field this year i'm not either but it's just it's, i think it's they the, might it's, work him in i mean the return on the investment of the value that's left on the board it's just i get know. it in the 15th round i mean i guess there's enough people out there that think that he's going to be good that, that that if and when he gets his chance which maybe he maybe they put some two cool qb sets in there this year and they get him they give him some run i i just I've watched some. I've watched a fair amount of his games. I've watched a lot of it, and I just I don't have any faith in him from the quarterback position. I'm not. I don't know that he's going to be able to go out there and read defenses and accurately throw the ball around. I just don't think that he has that in him. I don't know. May, hopefully, he proves me wrong. He's a phenomenal athlete and he's fun to watch. I just personally, I don't want anything to do with him from my running back spot. Or well, I would like for him to be in my running back spot, but he's a quarterback here. Like him in the receiver spot. And if if he. If he gets out there and runs around a little bit, and and people are like, oh my gosh, he could be really good, and these boys, these boys with their legs can score mad fantasy points. I get it, mad fantasy points, yo. If if there's a glimpse <laughs> of that, you gotta you gotta you gotta get rid of him and get more than what you just paid right. for him in the fifteenth round. Whole, that's the whole point of this pick. It's a return on investment and investment. All these guys, just like Big Co said, all these guys on the board, none of them would stack up against Lamar Jackson in a. You know. I knew this was a bad pick because the experts say it's sixty percent. Well, here's the, here's here's the, sure. here's the biggest part about this is it eighteenth round, no, fifteenth round here, fifteenth round, yeah, fifteen three. Even in a one quarterback league, he's nowhere near here. He's gonna this this yeah. is this is computer experts kind of algorithm here, and obviously people slide down and people go earlier than you think, and people are on the board longer than you think, and you know we've already seen a three round difference with Kenny Steele's on this draft versus the one we did last week. Lamar Jackson, even in a one quarterback league, is not making it to the fifteenth round. People are giving up first round picks for him in rookie drafts in in the second round. Whenever they could, he's still on the board, and they don't have a pick, they'll give up a first pick. It's happened in two of my rookie drafts already. Like Lamar Jackson's not going to make it to your fifteenth round of your startup. It's not going to happen. But I will say, I could, 
I just disagree with what Jay Wayne thinks he sees in Lamar Jackson. So you got, you have your opinion. I have mine. Well, and I I disagree with the fact that I I think he can hit. I think you watched gonna... those games. You watched a bunch of those games, Biko. Have you seen this dude throwing the ball? That boy can't hit the broad side of a. Broad so you barn. saw a couple balls drop on the ground. Did no. you see a couple of those balls that he threw right in people's chests? All you Did have you? to do is listen to the game, and you can tell that he's un- inaccurate. That and the ball is just always hitting the ground. He, dude the, cannot the, complete passes. Let's, I, we're let's, gonna we're gonna we're gonna save some Lamar this. Jackson we'll some stuff. I agree. I don't think he can play quarterback either. I, but I do. It's not a matter of if I think he could play quarterback or not. I don't need him to be a sustained starting quarterback in the NFL. I just need him to come in and make two or three starts and score a couple of points and get him the hell off my team here. He's just the best value left on the board. Period. Sure. And I just I'm ready to flip him as soon as he's doing something. There's no chance I want this guy being my starting quarterback on my team. Right. But there's just too much value to pass up on Lamar Jackson. That's right fine. Here. And this is a democracy. It was a two one vote we we took lamar let's do it and the silence sorry for the podcast if you were you got to go to the youtube video check this out yeah if you made it this far in you you definitely got to go check out the youtube video for sure well so we took lamar jackson there he's in our starting quarterback position on here but he's not going to be our starting quarterback (laughs) for this team he'll be Bump down to the bench. I mean, we're just we're gonna get an Alex Smith or a Matt Ryan or Ben Roethlisberger or Philip River or somebody. Else. Somebody right. awesome, right? Somebody. Get somebody absolutely worthy of being a fantasy quarterback and and pass the sixteenth round. That's exactly why you don't draft one earlier, right? So now we're 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 hanging out here. We're pretty much done with the running backs. There's one or two that we might want to stab on in, in a round or two. Um, but, but we're just going to look at the joke here at running back. This is why you take a bunch of right. running backs. Skill is Lee. It's Eddie Lacy. It's Mike Davis. It's Jonathan Stewart. It's Paul Perkins Eckler, which wouldn't be a bad pick here. And maybe looking back on it, I don't hate maybe taking him here because we have Melvin Gordon, uh, Frank Gore. But we, we, we yeah. can pass on Eckler because we like Justin Jackson. We could get him a little bit later. Right. We pass on him. Um, and really what we narrow it down to is we want another receiver and Alan Hearns is just kind of hanging around he's a guy who's been a professional in the league for a while he's had really good runs he had a nice run at the end of the last year when he got healthy for Jacksonville now he's over in Dallas do I love the Dallas passing attack no not really but it's 16th round and I can get Alan Hearns who's a 6'3 big bodied guy possession receiver who I think can really help the Dallas Cowboys out this year I don't need anything out of him but it's just it's purely a. I, I think this is a great, smart pick for right. anybody in the 16th round. Exactly, it's an opportunity play. You can grab Alan Hearns and just know you're putting targets on your bench here. As for depth and you know injuries and bye weeks and all that fun stuff, you know we I like you know don't expect anything out of him other than just opportunity, and we'll see what he does with it. Like you said, I mean I I completely not confident in the Dallas passing game, but somebody's got to get some targets over there, and Alan Hearns is is proven in years past it's a to couple be able of rookies make some Cole plays easily they don't even know exactly. he's playing tight end like somebody's got to get some balls over there sure i, I mean and if to me like a, a high a higher upside pick to me here would be the tyrell williams but i don't i liked i, I got on board with the alan hearns pick here because it is the opportunity is obvious so we grab alan hearns here four picks fall off the board what are we thinking well, we got a stacked board here. Eckler's still around, so I definitely don't hate that. Uh, Ricky Seals Jones, we're looking to maybe back up a tight end here at this pick. Jared Cook's still around. I like the Tyler Lockett as a stab, but we we're, we're loading up on my receivers at this point. Quincy Anunwa, I like them running out of the slot for the Jets, but you know it's the Jets. Um, <laughs> There's a bunch of wide receivers over there. All of a sudden, all Tyrell of a sudden, Williams the Jets still are available. Crowded. Sorry to be talking no, over no, like no, you. Okay. All of a sudden, the Jets crowded wide receivers with right. You know, the not maybe the non suspension for um, Robbie Anderson beating charges, Quincy Numer's back, and Terrell Pryor. And yeah, I mean, they got they got guys all of a sudden. Well, yeah, they got a they got a squad. Um, Tyrell Williams is still available, so he's a pick that Big Co likes. Um, as as far as the upside goes, but really, I think we're going to settle out here on trying to find maybe a tight end with with some good upside and. I want a piece of that Rams offense if I can get a piece of that Rams offense. Gerald Everett's extremely raw. He looked good in a couple of spots last year. He's not costing anything here at seven seventeen three. Um, so it really kind of comes down to Everett, Keelan Cole, Seals Jones, Tyrell Williams, Cook, Quincy, and Eckler. Um, 
Yeah, and I was I was happy about the just basically a home run cut on Gerald Everett. Excuse me, because if he, if he starts to do anything for those Rams, right. obviously there's a, there's some target people. You know, there's plenty of guys a lot around of there. To feed. there. Yeah, there's there's guys out there to spread the ball around too. But that, last year, really, that whole offensive side of the ball for the for the Rams pretty much healthy across the board, other than some Josh Reynolds getting yeah. nicked up. You know, so anything can happen. All of a sudden, they might need a little more Gerald Everett. And obviously, he was a rookie last year, and he was on the field, maybe not getting as many targets. But out there, he's watching some watching some film on Gurley, watching some stuff on Robert Woods. You see Gerald Everett out there. Yeah, he just maybe not being the guy on the play that's getting some targets. But when he did get the ball in his hands, you saw why they made the draft pick. Right, absolutely. absolutely. And, I, and I'm 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 all in on taking a shot on Everett here to 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 get another tight end on the board. So boom, there he goes. Our uh, it's the eighteen picks falling off here, yep, and you just, see that people chasing around the dollar bin running backs and just digging around in the bin for running backs, and you know it's just we don't want to be we don't want to be digging around in that bin. No well, way. We didn't want to be digging around in that bin, but, but we, we found a diamond sure. in there that, that a vintage record that we might be interested in, in popped right up, and uh, so we got a ton of choices. Most of the guys that we were kind of talking about last round are all still available: Seals, Jones, Cook. Quincy Anunua, Tyrell Williams, uh, Justin Jackson's on the board, who we could use because, again, we missed on Eckler and and we do have uh, Melvin Gordon. But old Buck Allen still hanging around. And Peyton Barber's, Peyton Barber's on the board, which I don't hate that really either, taking a stab on him. But Buck Allen looked really good in spots last year in this offense. That kind of secondary spot is that backfield's kind of up in the air, and sure. that, that that second running back position is kind of up in the air. You don't really know what's going to happen. Why not take a shot on Buck Allen in the 18th round? Well, we had a couple of tight ends on the list that we wanted. That we were talking about. Well, all right, we got Gerald Everett to just throw him on there. Let's get another one. But we got a, we, we got have to four picks four. exactly. Right. So we we had two or three guys we liked to the you know as our third tight end there. So we're like, all right, well, who are we going to luxury pick here while we wait on the tight end for the next pick? We were planned. We knew our next pick before we. We knew this pick and it was just going to be a tight end next pick and we were looking around and just like buck allen i think casey was like we how are we passing up on buck allen right here and he all he's done is catch passes every single year when somebody gets hurt he plays more and he and he shows up and he does well and then people come back in and he just kind of just hangs out waiting on his time again and i i love the buck allen pick. yeah i'm okay with the receivers that are on our team I'm okay with the running backs. So I'm I'm kind of okay. You can kind of do whatever you want. It's the end of this draft here, and I like the upside of what Buck Allen can provide. Absolutely. So let's get us this Buck Allen. Four picks go off the board. We already had our plan. Our boy's still there. Justin Jackson's a little bit of a bummer to go off the board for us there. I would have liked to get at least one of those handcuffs for... Uh, Should we have taken him over Javarius there? Um. It's tough because you've seen what Javorius I mean, can do. You he's know? probably a little bit more useful for us. We don't really need Javorius Allen, but uh, I'm not upset having Buck Allen on the squad. I'm not either. Same. But all right. So, so basically, our our you know we wanted to get another backup tight end. We've been talking about addressing the issue for a while, and this is pretty much where we're going to do it. Um, we had Jared Cook and Ricky Seals Jones as our targets. They're still around, um, so it kind of gets into a little bit of a debate here. I like Jared Cook. I think he's uh, he's awesome. I think he's one of the best late round tight end flyers you could possibly have. Feels like he's older than he really is. Right, he's only thirty one, uh, which is prime time for uh, old tight ends there. But uh, you know, essentially, obviously today marks a day where Ricky Seals Jones got popped by the police, so <laughs> yep. it's a bit of a bummer. Forced his way into a bathroom, so. Not the worst case scenario. Could have been worse. Right. But basically, we took him because there's so much love out there for Ricky Seals-Jones. The hype is just billowing over. Sure. And if he just does anything at all during the preseason and it blossoms, you know, it's just going to be he, the public outpouring for what Ricky Seals-Jones, the former receiver um, from uh, where, where's he? Where's where's old uh, Seals-Jones from? Texas A&M. Former receiver from Texas A&M there. It really could turn into something. There's not a ton of people vying for targets over there in uh, yeah. in Arizona, so he could really blossom into something that we want to maybe flip pretty easily before the season even starts, possibly. That's the thing is like the, the hype on some young tight ends, a lot of times it's way premature. You see it over and over again, but I can see the path for Ricky Seals-Jones for to be able to – obviously the middle of that field is going to be a little busy between Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald – 
But again, they got unproven everybody else. Right. Is, you know, hopefuls throughout the rest of the wide receiver core and nobody else, uh, you know, other than old Jermaine Gresham trying to come back from a blown Achilles. So it's, it's, it's his job to lose basically, unless the veteran comes back with a bum ankle and he, you know, he's actually better than you, they expect him to be And from a leadership and a block and roll. Maybe they give him more playing time than we expect. But right now it looks like it's seals Jones job to lose other than the, you know, the altercation with the police today. But, yeah, I can see the path for the targets for Ricky Seals. And just like you said, Casey, if that man gets five catches in week one, he's a first-round draft gets pick. a couple of ca- – has a decent showing in week three of the preseason. Sure. He could be off my team before – Yeah, we could trade him before you know hits. it. A first-round rookie draft pick. Is yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Fair. All right, we take Ricky. Ricky goes, 18 picks, proceed to fall off the board, and then we decide to look at uh, quarterback finally. We're like, yep. oh, we got Matt Ryan here. We debated. It's just stupid that Matt Ryan's on the board, but that's right. the way it happens. That's that's the way it happens. I mean, I can't be upset at all with taking Matt Ryan here. We've waited long enough. Two years ago, I got him in the 18th round of a startup. He has the MVP season, and then last year he's uh, you know drafted high. Kyle Shanahan left, offensive regressed. Here we go again, 20th round in this mock draft. We obviously we already have Lamar Jackson on our team as a value pick for, you know, just a rookie on the bench. We looking at taking Matt Ryan here to plug him in as our starter. And, you know, we debated other players, but at the end of the day, it's about that time. You know, when Matt Ryan's this late, it's ridiculous. Obviously we hold out for Alex Smith or Ben Roethlisberger, but you take a guy who's, you know, plays in the dome. <laughs> I make make Casey laugh every time I say right. that. Matt Matt Ryan playing half his games in the dome and he's got Julio and a couple of running backs to throw to. So how could you not like him and and we pulled the trigger. Well so we, we actually do. did. We pulled the trigger. We do pull the trigger. But <laughs> We pulled they were them. like, what are we doing? There's still other quarterbacks on the board. <laughs> and we saw while we were scrolling around, we saw Geronimo Allison and Deion Kane on the board. Now, we may have been able to wait on Deion Kane. Who knows? But you but, still you see Ben and you see Alex Smith, and it's like, how can we take a quarterback? Right. So we, were, we decide that uh, we're going to we're gonna use one of our three lifelines. Do over. Yeah, three lifelines. <laughs> Do over. Which I misspoke last week. You can revert one pick on this mock draft for in the free version of this, this right. uh, tool. And so we <laughs> we were trying not to do any reverts, but we were like, what, what are we doing? And I, I'm trying to fast forward here to the point because I don't know how long it actually took us to make this, this the decision <laughs> to revert. We were like, man, Geronimo Miles is out there. Deion and- Kane couldn't make a decision. We wanted them both. And we were like, you know what? We could just do without the quarterback that we just put on our team. Right. Take we, him back off pick, our team. We pick back to back here. If we undo this Matt Ryan pick, we get the pick and then do uh you know, the turn, four more picks we get, and we could potentially get Kane and Geronimo. So Miles. we go and up and you see it right so there. So we, we revert reverted. the pick and we what do we do? We take we take Geronimo. There's just a lot of upside in Geronimo Allison, who's flashed at times in Packer Land. They need they need another guy over there. They Jordy's did draft out, Jordy's out the wide uh, receivers, but Jordy's, Jordy's out, gone. The, out the game. And Geronimo's a, a great stab here that we didn't want to pass up. A fantastic stab that we didn't want to pass up. We we ended we passed him up for the quarterback, but then we were like, oh, we need him or him and Deion Kane there. So we went back, and redid it. And let me just say this real quick. It's a minute. It's an hour and twenty three minutes into this recording here. So if you're listening this far in, you're obviously a very serious dynasty football player. All right. So that's we made a joke about reverting to pick and stuff like here. This is exactly why you put your practice in, right? Because you're like, all right, well, Matt Ryan was sitting there just staring us in the face, and we're like, well, how can we not take Matt Ryan here because he's just a quarter? We might as well take him. Who you know, we can that way. If we maybe it's a potential upgrade on Alex Smith in Washington because he leaves his system and all those good you know tight ends and running backs and wide receivers that he had to throw to. Maybe we could take Matt Ryan. He plays in the dome, all that fun stuff. And then we're like, oh my god, what we should have done was hey, Allison. So. That way you zero in in a deeper bench league. If you don't have all these bench spots and you got to have a quarterback, I get it. Take Matt Ryan. But if you have these couple of bench spots left and we're trying to... And there's still other quarterbacks on the board. It's not like he's the last one and there's nobody else good. We're we're mocking up a deeper bench league here so we can get in here and figure out where we need to place a Deion Kane and a Geronimo Allison. We figured it out. We're like, well, I'd much rather have Deion Kane than not have Deion Kane. Sprinkled in a little rookie, a little young, a little youth. Right, exactly. The difference between Matt Ryan and you know 
Ben Roethlisberger and Alex Smith and Blake Bortles is you, not Deion Kane. Right. I, I need Deion Kane in my life. Right. Yeah, give me I the need. give me the, give me the game along the the ton of upside that Deion Kane has of being maybe Luck's number two guy and Geronimo Allison being Aaron Rodgers maybe two or third guy two or uh, right number three guy or third right. guy yeah crazy Matt Ryan's still on the freaking board we couldn't believe it. Just couldn't believe it. Blew our mind. Feels like cheating. But so is Ben Roethlisberger and Alex Smith. So I'm guessing that we don't take a quarterback. Well, here. survey says <laughs> we're not going quarterback. <laughs> we're gonna let old Matt go one more time around the wheel. So we're 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 digging around over here. We see you know a couple viable options like Laquan Treadwell, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, really, Trent Taylor pops up, and I'm I'm a. I'm a, I'm a guy, and I, I couldn't shy, shy away from the, the trusty slot receiver over there in 49er land, and why not? We're in pick 22. We could Even if we miss on Matt Ryan on on you know the four picks in between uh, 22-10 and 23-3, we still got a deep-ditch pizza in the trunk, so <laughs> we're good to go. Of course, DiGiorno. I'm not sure which one. But. Right. So you know we could still have Alex Smith and or Ben Roethlisberger. So we decide to... Uh, is Ben Roethlisberger the deep dish? Obviously. Well, it was a little Tommy <laughs> boy for you. But uh, oh. we're going to end up going with, with old it's Trent Taylor here because I, we're getting a little bit more youth on our team. He's a guy who I believe in. I think he's going to be a really good player. I like him coming out of the slot for San Francisco. If you're and if it doesn't at, hit, who cares? Yeah, if, if you're scoring at home, I, I, we had no chance of talking Casey out of Trent Taylor in a mock draft in round 22. I mean, come you, on. You could make you could make cases for Albert Wilson, Ryan Grant oh, Albert, there. Yeah, for sure. Albert know, Wilson's a great pick. Pick your poison right there. Just grab the guy that you think could get some catches. Oh, we're going to get Ryan Grant. Don't you worry. <laughs> Did we get Ryan Grant? Oh, of course oh, we got Ryan Grant. I love it. So we took Trent Taylor, and then our boy Matt Ryan is still there, and we're like, all right. All right, Matt. Four rounds we, later, right, yeah. we'll do it. We had to take Matt Ryan. Which I think Casey was trying to make an argument for Alex Smith over Matt Ryan. Oh, of course. At that point, he just wanted to throw more players on the bench. Save that for a, for another day. Give me old give me old A. Smith. I'm, I'm not upset having Matt Ryan. I like having Matt Ryan. He's a good dude. Matty Ice. Matty Ice. Just got Plays paid. In a dome. Just, set the, just not, set the market again for Reset quarterbacks. It. All right, so we're at pick 24-10 here. We really like uh, oh Jermaine Curse. I was trying to remember his name when we were talking about the Jets. Like, I, yeah, there's They're no about reason. Him. I knew there was another there's one. There's no reason Jermaine Curse is still on the board here, other than the whole cloud of just wide receiver Jets. Like, you can't the well, Jets talking can't about even them. get that many passes out to right. throw to those guys. Like, if you look at the game log, I mean, this man was putting up numbers last year. So we were he, he was. And he if was. you if you go to pick twenty four ten here, we're gonna round this thing out. We're gonna stop talking about Jets receivers for a second. Sorry. And uh <laughs> we really want to take Ryan Grant here because we don't want to miss him. Can't but we like him. uh Deshaun Hamilton a lot, and he could be a nice little rookie pick at the bottom of our bench who could pan out. Maybe he plays this year, maybe he has to wait till next year. But we really like what he has going on. But inevitably we take Ryan Grant here and a bummer happens. So we have to use another lifeline. What happened? He goes, we take Ryan Grant and Deshaun Hamilton goes at 25 one, I believe. So we revert the pick. We revert that thing. We already did it once. You open the floodgates up right, and it's right, over. Right. That's the end of this, <laughs> this thing. This again while you practice. And here's the thing. It kind of goes back to what Jay was saying earlier is look at the list. If we only had one more bench spot, I'm saying you got to take Ryan Grant because in the first two or three weeks of the season, you're gonna know if you got caught fire or not. Because if if Luck's out here wh out there whipping him right. passes, same reason why you wanted Kane. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I love putting putting Ryan Grant in the same team at the end of the bench at the end of the draft with with Deion Kane because you're getting parts of Luck's offense. If he comes back hot and heavy, then you're gonna be crushing it with ab late round steals. But in this format. On this list, right. Deshaun Hamilton was so much higher. We had two spots, so we went back and we're like, all right, well, if we take Deshaun Hamilton first, we get Ryan Grant in four picks and we're done. Right. Ryan Grant's down here at 126 on the list, and Deshaun was up there at 93. We, yeah. Yeah. we weren't really thinking we didn't that. Use your error. Yeah, we didn't really pay attention to that. We were so, deep so That's into exactly why you get your practice in. But again, I would take Ryan Grant over Deshaun Hamilton all day long if I had to, just because I know after one or two weeks of the season, Deshaun Hamilton probably not going to be showing you a whole lot. That rookie – Buried in on that depth chart in Denver, and Ryan Grant's gonna break out. A minus. And 
They gave us an A minus. How about usually, that? Uh, if, if you take our draft strategy and you play around on this machine, not, like, you can get C minuses, right. B minuses. I'm actually surprised because yeah. we never took the expert pick. I don't. Rarely. I don't care what the draft grade says. Right. I'm building my team to beat you on a week to week basis with my running back depth, and I was happy with that A minus. But it really didn't matter to me at all. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you sticking around for the hour thirty minutes here, and hopefully you learned a little something, or maybe you just think we're a bunch of idiots. Definitely um, possible. Either which way, we're going to have another... If you stuck it out, you like what you hear, right. I think. Or you it were just having deep. so much fun saying that these guys are idiots. Right. <laughs> I got to hear more of this idiocracy. <laughs> right. We're going to have another podcast uh, following this with no visual aids. Just get into a little bit more of maybe a couple of the debates that we had here. Some of that Lamar uh, Jackson talk will be in there. We'll have maybe some... Uh, maybe some more Trey Burton talk. Maybe a little bit more of... Uh, Lamar Jackson... Well, Lamar Jackson and maybe some, you know, kind of just some different options that we had here that we didn't really get into the player versus player right. too, too much. Rostering Pierre Garçon as a 31-year-old man with a neck injury versus some of the younger guys, all that, you know. Get, oh, that's get a no-brainer to me. Well, you know, yeah, but I'm just saying, just we can get into some more stuff that we didn't want to pile into this video. All right, well, I think that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone. We really appreciate it. If you're listening on the podcast and you're on iTunes, please hit that five-star so, uh, review for us. It really helps us out. Super, super big thanks and shout out to everyone that's already done so. Check out our YouTube page. If you're, if you're, if you're listening to this on the podcast, definitely go check out the YouTube page. We put this draft up there for you. If you're, if you're on there, hit subscribe. Check out our website, the ffdynasty.com. We just dropped that guy. We're working on putting some more. We got some rankings up there. We're going to get some more up there. And then you can go and check out these draft boards and, and listen to any, you know, you can search for any player. And, and find the video that we've done on them. Um, you can see all the podcasts we've done. It's really cool. We're, we're just going to keep adding to that as, as you know, time goes on. Um, but thanks for listening, everyone. We're also on all your other uh, platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, One Day Spotify. Uh, Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.